I mean, you're gonna have so much fun doing this, hitting good contact, that you could play great golf just doing this. Hey there, Segudo golfers. Today I'm addressing the age old question of what should I really be working on in the golf swing? Are you working on the right things? Do you work on the backswing? Do you work on the downswing? Do you know what you're working on? Today I'm gonna to clarify and clear any confusion you might be having about what to work on your golf swing, get you working on one thing that gets you on the right track to good ball striking no matter who you are or what your skill level is at golf. This simply works. And the number one thing you should be working on in the golf swing is contact. Being able to hit the ball first and take a nice divot on the front side of the ball. What you should really be working on is creating solid contact with the golf ball. You'll hit the ball further with less effort if you can hit it consistently on the center of the club face and you can hit the ball first and take a divot on the front side. If you can't hit the ball first and take a divot on the front side, you shouldn't be working on anything else in your golf game. We start here and we continue to make this our top priority. Being able to hit ball first and take a divot, hearing that nice crispy impact sound. So what do we need to do to achieve crispy contact with the ball? We need to do a couple of things. The first thing you need to understand is that this golf club, if you want it to come into the ground the same spot every time, your left arm, if you're a right hand player, your lead arm must be straight. So if this arm stays straight, it is allowed to enter the ground at the same spot every single time, which means crispy contact for you. So at the top of my golf swing, the lead arm should be straight, coming into near impact, lead arm is straight, impact, lead arm is straight, through impact, lead arm is straight. That is a must have. If you're not able to get the arm straight, you must force it straight. Trust me, you can't go without keeping this arm straight. You have to do it. The second thing you have to do is think about what you're doing with your weight in your golf swing. Are you shifting your weight? So if you want to have the most consistent golf swing, you shouldn't be shifting your weight, and here's why. The second I make any lateral motion, any shifting, look what happens with my lead arm. It moves behind the ball. You See that right there? It's moving behind the golf ball, which means even if I kept my arm straight, if I keep my weight back, I will hit behind the ball inconsistent contact, hit behind it or scoop it and hit it thin. It's a very common problem today. So we must think about where the weight's going. Where's your weight going? Your weight should be staying relatively centered in the golf swing, meaning that it's not doing any shifting or swaying. So you have to start thinking about rotation instead of sway. See, swaying doesn't like rotation. If I rotate, I don't sway. But if you, if you don't rotate, if you lock your hips and your lower body, you will sway. And we don't want that because that's causing inconsistent contact. So when I put these two things together, the weight staying centered, meaning that I'm favoring my front side with the weight and keeping it there, and I've got the lead arm straight, that allows the club to come into the ground the same spot every time, always on the front side of the ball divot on the front side crispy contact all day long. If you kept me here and doing this, I would hit ball first, take a divot all day long. When you get into the full swing, you need to focus on these two big keys. The weight must stay forward, the arms must stay straight. You will hit the ball very solid. When I go about practicing my golf swing, I'm always going back to doing these two things. I think about where's my contact point. Is the club coming into the ground the same spot every time? If it's not, Houston, we've got a problem and we've got to fix it fast because my priority is solid contact no matter what and it should be yours too. So when you're practicing, don't go through and do a big wraparound finish, especially for what I'm about to show you right here. This is the magic secret. This is the glue. This is, it's just beautiful deliciousness for the golf swing. What you need to do is think about stopping short, meaning that your club, you should stop about here in the fall through. The reason for that's simple. It gets you training good impact. Most people swing through with the wraparound and that gets you thinking about doing this. So you see the breakdown of the arms, the flipping, the inconsistent things you're doing right now. What you gotta do is think about stopping short because when you focus on stopping short, look where my arms are. The lead arm is straight, the weight is forward, and I hit that really solid. So when you stop short, you think about good impact. You don't think about finishing the swing. You're just all about 
impact. There's another solid one. And you could do this all day long, stopping right here. You're taking all your momentum, you're taking a truck going 100 miles an hour, and you are stopping it into a wall. I'm not slowing down, I'm accelerating, but I'm throwing that truck right into the wall, the club head right into the wall at 100 miles an hour. So it's a lot of effort, boom, hitting that wall, stopping. And it's telling me, yeah, I've got some good gravy right here. Look at that. I've got forward shaft lean at impact because impact's telling you what you're doing in the follow through. Look at that. That's magic. That's magic right there. So a lot of golfers like to practice at home. How do you know if you're doing good contact on a mat at home or you're in your garage? Well, you don't really know. So that's why I love to practice with instant feedback using something really cool. This thing right here is called the divot board and it has revolutionized my practice sessions because it tells me exactly where this club comes into the ground. There's the ball, and anything where the club makes a mark, it leaves a trail. Your path of the club, so your path could be going neutral, or in the out, or across, telling you everything you need to know about the path of your club, which causes the curve of the ball. But it also tells you whether you hit it on the center, off the heel, or even off the toe. So there's so much feedback right here that you can't get on a mat or just off your dry, hitting balls off your driveway into a net. So I actually use this in my practice sessions in my yard because I need to know where this club is coming into the ground. The best part about this is that you don't need a golf ball to practice getting good contact. You simply get feedback right off the ground. Sure, you can go into your yard and you can practice with just a club and taking nice divots out of your lawn, but I'm not sure your spouse would be too okay with that or maybe even your HOA and we don't want to deal with that. So using the divot board allows you to take your divot board onto your lawn and then you can simply take divots out of the divot board and understand that you're getting really crispy contact with the golf ball. Check that out right there. That's what you need to see every single time. This is what the pros are doing. You hit the ball first and you got a divot on the front side of the golf ball. If you're not doing this, you're going to struggle forever until you can do this. So the divot board allows me to practice anywhere, anytime, getting solid contact with the ball. So what am I working on here? Once again, my weight staying forward. I'm not shifting my weight. My lead arm is staying straight. When I focus on these things, I'm really confident that I'll hit the ball first and I'll take a divot on the front side of the ball. Right there, ball first, divot on front side. Now you don't want it going too far forward. That's about as far forward as I'd be happy with. Like if you start taking divots way out here, you're definitely hitting it thin, so we don't want to be doing that. But look at this. I'm able to practice. I don't even need a ball, and I can control my contact point. So I've got my arm staying straight, and I'm keeping my weight forward, which helps me to have a consistent contact point with the ground. Ooh, that was mashed right there. Check out the divot. Ball first, taking a divot. And all I'm doing is working on those two simple things. You don't have to work on a million things in your golf swing. You just have to get good contact consistently, shot in, shot out. Once you master this, you work on other pieces like adding power to the stroke. But trust me, you're going to have so much fun doing this, hitting good contact, that you can play great golf just doing this. Lead arm staying straight, weight staying forward. Here we go again. Divot always on front side of the ball. Instant feedback. This is so powerful because when you have a device that measures where the club comes into the ground, you don't need a golf ball. You could do this outside or inside your house, even on a rainy day. And I know we love golf so much, we want to get crispy contact all the time, so we practice all the time. I'm working on the right things. I'm working on contact all day long. Crispy, crispy, crispy. If you can do this, and I know you're going to do this correctly because you've got the tips you need to do to create consistent impact right here in this video. Use a divot board or something that can measure club coming into the ground. This is an invaluable practice tool. Now check out this life-changing transformation for one of my students. So good old golfers, meet Daryl. Daryl came to me for an in-person golf lesson and he was struggling with bad contact 
In fact, he had never taken a divot consistently in front of the golf ball. And like most of you who come to my channel, you're struggling with getting crispy contact. So Daryl struggles with flipping. And this is probably the biggest problem I see in the golf swing among all amateur golfers. The arms breaking down after impact and the club shaft pointing down range like this. So basically you're losing all your power and consistency because the arms are breaking down. Daryl and I worked really hard to get his arms straight after impact to help him take a divot on the front side of the golf ball, hitting ball first, getting that beautiful buttery feeling of crispy impact. So you see me here holding a stick. And the whole idea of me holding the stick here, it turns out that Daryl would overswing in his follow through. So do that big wraparound finish. But for me to get him to stop flipping, I put a stick there and said, don't go past that stick. And what this did is it created some beautiful impact lines. After impact, you see the arms staying straight and extended with the club shaft pointing down at the ground. The first words out of his mouth when he did this correctly were, that feels extremely weird, which is good because he was coming from flipping and flipping was comfortable. Flipping out was comfortable. So getting the arms straight and extended will feel very weird. As you can see, he's able to create a divot now in this beautiful rehearsal. So then we go to round two. I keep the stick there, and he is going to hit a ball now with the same feeling. So stick is right here. Don't swing past that stick. Keep the arms extended through the shot. Here is the result. Coming into impact. Beautiful impact position right here. There's this magical thing right here. That's called a divot. That's deep fried KFC contact. And after impact, we also see beautiful extension of the arms and the club shaft pointing down at the ground. When looking at a pro golfer, we need to create a situation for you to have crispy contact. Flipping, you have a million different points of contact. But if you can keep the elbows together, the arms straight, and the weight forward, you will hit it crispy every single time. You give yourself the best chance to hit it crispy. So after impact, you should be trying to get to this position right here, where the arms are straight and extended with the club shaft pointing down at the ground, at least to this point in the golf swing. After that, you can follow through. When looking at old Daryl here on the left, we see the dreaded flipping. At the same point in the downswing, in the new golf swing, we see arms straight and extended through the golf shot. The old Daryl would never take a divot on the front side of the golf ball with the flip. This breaking down of the arms causes the club to go up through the shot so the club doesn't come into the ground in front of the ball. Usually you're scooping and hitting it thin or you're hitting behind the golf ball. In the new Daryl, he will hit ball first and take a divot on the front side every time he gets this club into this position. He's got the arm straight and extended club shaft pointing down at the ground. If, he, if you can just focus on pointing that club shaft down at the ground instead of in the old where he's pointing it down range, you are going to hit the ball so much more solid. Lastly, we need to keep this solid crispy impact going. So we take a lovely Home Depot driveway marker alignment stick, best $2 training aid ever. You place it in the ground at a diagonal like so. And what this is going to do is it's going to act as if it's your golf instructor holding a stick right here telling you to stop short. So if I go beyond this point, I'll hit the stick, probably do my wraparound finish. We don't really want to do that. I want to stop very short. So probably right about there is about as extreme as it will get. If you're having trouble getting quality impact, keep it at a spot where you're really going to hit it short. Change the angle if you want it a little bit easier. So you can move it upwards like this. If I change the angle, I can go a little bit further. Right about there is where I would like to see it for at least my swing and for the average golfer. Because that tells you if you can get to here, stopping short, you can see the arms are both straight and then the club is pointing down at the ground. That's what you need for crispy contact. Take a three quarter swing, stop short. Look, I hit the stick. It's okay to hit the stick. That's just there to tell me to stop so that I can see quality impact, quality impact. So that tells you you're working on the right things. 
Now what do we do? We combine it all together so that you can be staying on the right track with your golf swing even from home. You don't need a driving range, you don't need a whole bunch of buckets of balls to do this. I'm not using a ball. I know the instant feedback's right here with the divot board and with this alignment stick in the ground. So you gotta put it in a spot where it's going to be a threat. You will hit it with the alignment stick, that's okay. Divot board through to alignment stick. The two best things you need to groove solid impact all day long. Here we go, short three quarter swing. Stopping short. All right, little chunky monkey there. I hit slowly behind it. Oh darn. We're gonna continue to work on it until I get it solid. So something happened where I hit behind the ball just slightly. But you know you're working on the right things because not shifting my weight, arms are staying straight. That's a great poem, isn't it? Not shifting my weight and my arms are staying straight. Here we go again. Not shifting my weight, arms are staying straight. Wow! Did you see that alignment stick? Not a bad shot, let me be a little thin. Where'd my alignment stick go? I stopped short, but not short enough. It's right over here in the woods, stabbed into the middle of a tree. Continue to work it out. Divot board, stopping short. Good post impact, bad contact with the ball, a little behind it, but not really worried because I know when I get through impact that my impact is, my impact position is so solid. Here we go again, working on stopping short. So pointing the club down at the ground, that's really the secret gravy right there. Wait forward. Well, good shot. <laughs> the stick flew away again. What's that tell me? It tells me I swung too far through in the forward swing. But good contact. Make sure there are no women or children around when you're doing this so that nobody gets impaled by a stick. We would not want that. But I'm really liking the results here in my practice session. This is my practice session. Really, Tom? You don't need a huge bucket of balls? Yeah, you don't. You just do this. You do this, and then you could take it to the golf course. So I'm just working on getting through impact. A little chunky there. But once I've finished this, you take away the divot board, you take away the stick, and then you simply We'll hit golf shots. Maybe do a little rehearsal. Right to there. Just like you have the drill. Nice and solid right there. And I should be trying to replicate the drill. I should be trying to point that club down, stop and short. There. Nice and solid. You can see the same habits form. Good impact, good impact, good impact. So what should you be working on your golf swing? You should be working on hitting the ball first, taking a divot on the front side of the ball. The way we do that, lead arm stays straight, the weight stays forward. If you can do those two things, which are really simple to remember, you're going to play great golf. Comment below and share with other Segudo golfers what you're working on in your golf swing right now. I had the opportunity to interview a bunch of amateur golfers at the World Am Myrtle Beach asking them the one same question. What are you working on in your golf swing? Here's what they had to say. Don't swing out of my shoes. You take it up, keep that left one straight. I just stand up, line her up, and let her rip. You line up. Slow back swing, follow through, and just let it fly. Driver eye, uh, grip and rip it like John Daly. So it goes back fast, down hard, hit hard. On the driver. Currently, I'm working on actually compressing the golf ball more because the more I hit down with my irons, the better I can compress the ball and get the ball to actually work the way I want it to. Get all my weight going forward so that way I can actually compress the ball and get it to actually go where I want in the direction. It just grip it and rip it, really. Good old John Daly. I try and keep my backswing short. I try and come through a little inside down and uh, make solid contact. Uh, left arm straight. Drop in the slot, swing out, basic stuff, club, club face square, you know, you stuff can like that. Play some good golf doing that. That's what's going to keep you in play. I'm trying to keep it nice and short, like uh, Rambo and, uh, and Finau, 
not take it back too far. A lot more control. It's been working out so far. So my problem is sometimes I, instead of your right hand, I overpower with my left hand. You got to keep that right elbow close to you, to your right side. You got to bring it back at seven o'clock. Love it. And take it out to one o'clock. And it either goes straight or you'll have a baby draw. And just don't think about anything else if you'll just work on them swing thoughts because you got to keep your mind free and just let it flow. It's five easy lessons for Ben Hogan. Well, the biggest thing, the first chapter is the grip. The grip. Makes a big change. Your only connection with the club. Absolutely. It's a great book. And, and he was pretty particular. He's like, grip it absolutely correctly. Absolutely. He, and he tells you in the book, very specifically, don't change it. Don't change it. The only thing I'm thinking about, man, hit that ball, make sure it goes straight, and if it ends up in the woods, take another shot. You know, my follow through is, is nice and extended, you know, so that I'm not just, you know, short arming the club or anything like that. Right, so getting those arms straight yes, after impact, yes, really ab working absolutely. well. Absolutely. It's all about hitting the ball solid. It is, hitting it crispy. Yes, just, just try and uh, stay over the ball and just swing it steady. Number one, not try to kill it. Number two, focus on a spot just out in front of the ball. Okay. Make sure I get the uh, ball first contact. You get that crispy contact, that nice divot in front of the ball. Yes, sir. So we're not even, we're skipping the golf swing. We're going straight to putting. Yeah. I'm having issues pushing it and pulling it. So pushing and pulling your putts. Yeah. Usually I just try to think about putting my weight forward. If I do that, usually I can just always hit the ball at least. I don't know where it'll go but at least I won't like shank it, which is the most important thing for me at least. <laughs> I just see the, the driver hitting the ball like that. I just can't wait to hit it. You see mashed potatoes. Yes. That's mashed really what you're seeing. You're seeing it's crispy as mashing KFC. the ball. <laughs> right. Crispier than KFC. Yes, solid, any... a solid hit. So Sagudo golfers, you know what to work on. Solid contact. If you're looking to play your best golf right now, check out my online golf school, sagudo.golf. For 10 bucks a month, you play the best golf of your life. Click here to subscribe to my channel for more awesome golf content. And here are two lovely selections from the Segudo Golf Archives designed to help you play your best golf right now. What are you waiting for? Life is far too short to play bad golf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future Segudo Golf episode.